if that makes sense, 95%, 95% of the time, and do it correctly because the effect actually is there, if that makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the number of predictors. So you can see here, this just is a simple model with two predictors. If we just hit calculate here, it tells us what we're interested in is the sample size. It tells us that you, to achieve, to observe an effect of 0.35, uh, at a, and a type 1 error rate of 5% and a type 2 error rate of 5% uh, which gives us a power of 0 0.95 which um, would mean that we'd observe that effect we have a 95% chance of observing that effect we need a total sample size of 48 okay? uh, 48 participants is what's be required in this particular this particular mix say we throw in another independent variable okay? so there's three independent variables or three predictors and if we hit calculate you see, well, it's gone up. Where did it go? It went from 2 with 2. 2 was 48. With three predictors, it's going up to 54. So it went from 48 up to 54. So this is the minimum number that's required. Okay? Say we throw in another predictor. You can see that this is growing. The sample size increases. So the more predictors that we have in the mix, yeah, uh, the bigger the sample size that's required. Let's just keep in mind that we're trying to observe a very large effect here. Okay, so you only need 60, 59 participants with four predictors. What about five predictors? You can see that what we have is we have 63 participants are required. Uh, let's reduce this down here a little bit. Okay, so instead of saying, let's say, instead of us, let's say, oops, let's just get this up here again. Instead of us looking for 0 0.35, let's look for a medium effect of 0 0.15. So 0. 0 0.15 and medium effect. Uh, let's keep these alpha and beta values the same. Okay? And let's just go back down to a two variable uh, model or even a one variable model. Okay, And let's hit calculate. And you can see even with one variable in the mix to observe a, min a medium effect, we need 89 participants down here. Okay, So there's 89 participants required. If you throw in two variables into the mix, well, we're up to 107. A three variable model, well, there you go, we're up to 100, 119, nearly 120. A four variable model is up to 129. So you can see this is growing as, you know, it's growing as we're adding in more predictors, which is important to keep in mind again, is the more predictors that you have in the model, uh, more predictors you have in the model, the more participants you're going to require. And I suppose if we bring this down now to a small effect, 0 0.02 with four predictors, well, there you go. We need 944 participants, which is probably going to be out of out of reach for most students that are doing an undergraduate or a postgraduate dissertation. Okay, uh, if you're doing a, an undergrad uh, dissertation or maybe even a master's, you're probably not going to be able to get 944 participants. Maybe at PhD level, we'd probably we'd have an expectation that you'd be able to achieve achieve a sample size of that size, which would allow you to observe small effects in your population. Okay, so that's the fixed model, fixed effects model, uh, or squared deviation from zero. There's no hierarchical, uh, there's nothing hierarchical in here. Uh, let's say it was a hierarchical model, so here's the fixed effects model with an R squared increase. Okay, and everything else says the same. Let's just put this back to 0 0.35, 0 0.35 for a large effect. Uh, the probability of committing a type 1 error is still 5%. The probability of committing a type 2 error is 5%, which gives us an achieved power of 95%, uh, which is quite big. Okay? Uh, the number of tested predictors. Okay? So what we're really saying here is this, is that out of all... I'll come back to that. Okay? The total number of predictors in the model, let's just say that there's three predictors in the model. Okay? Now, out of the three predictors, is there... Is there a number of them predictors that I'm really interested in, okay, above and beyond the effect of the others? So, for example, if I hit this, say, there is one of them, okay, maybe I'm interested in the effect of, let's say, the effect of uh, maybe, let's just think here, let's say, the, the, the effect of uh, wealth, yeah, okay, on access to education, okay, or wealth on education levels or something like that. Uh, well, then maybe what I've got here is I've just got one variable that I'm interested in, okay. The point being here is that, albeit you might have lots of variables within your model, okay, 
The final level of the hierarchical analysis is really typically the one that we're interested in. Uh, all the levels before the final level okay, are typically variables that we're controlling for above and beyond the effect uh, uh, of. So in the in the last level, we're controlling for uh, all the variables in the in the in, in the levels before it. Okay? So let's just see what we have here. We've got one main variable that we're interested in, uh, but we've got three predictor variables. So once again, we need a sample size of 40. If we reduce this down here to, let's say, uh, 0 0.150, 0 0.15 to a medium effect, and if we hit calculate, we're up to 89. Uh, if we increase the predictors, let's say we've got 10 predictors, and let's say in the final level, there's two things in the final level that we're interested in. Uh, well, we're up to 107, yeah? which is sort of the rule of thumb for every predictor Okay, we really need 10 observations in the mix. Yeah, that's sort of the rule of thumb that, that people usually go by. But the key thing here about this G star power is that it allows us to get to, to get down to the fine granularity in relation to the sample size that's required uh, when we're undertaking when we're undertaking an analysis. Okay, guys, uh, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope that this video was in some way helpful. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.